Hello fellow coffee botherers, I'm Kev from coffeeblog.co.uk and in this video I'm going to be talking about the new Gadget Classic Pro or Gadget Classic 2019. If you're a regular viewer or reader of coffeeblog.co.uk you'll know that I've been promising to do a proper review of the new Gadget Classic Pro for quite a while. I did a video talking about the Gadget Classic Pro while actually using my old trusty 2003 Gadget Classic, which is up there, for that video, which didn't go down too well. I got lots of thumbs down for that because people didn't get that I was talking about the new one while showing the old one. I get that, I understand. And I've been waiting to get hold of the new Gadget Classic 2019 or Gadget Classic Pro, and finally, I've got one. I've written a really comprehensive, in-depth review of the Gadget Classic Pro. And if you go to coffeeblog.co.uk forward slash GC, you can read that post where I talk more in depth than I'm gonna go into in this video. So just to go into the background slightly of the Classic. The Classic came out in, I think it was 91. It became a really popular espresso machine, the entry level home barista machine. And throughout the 90s, early noughties, mid noughties, the Classic was going strong. It was a brilliant machine. Lots and lots of people rated it as a beginner home barista espresso machine. Then in 2009, I think it was, Philips bought the company that owned Gadget, because Gadget had sold a while previously, and things started to change. They moved production out of Italy, and they started to mess with the classic. And what it became, really most people would probably agree, that it became a different, more modern espresso machine, like many of the domestic espresso machines are, in the case of the original Gadget Classic, but it wasn't quite the original Gadget Classic. And there were various different models from 2009 to 2015 with varying degrees of difference from the original. One of the main things that people weren't happy about was the removal of the mechanical three-way solenoid valve, which happened not long, I think, after 2009. And bits of plastic got put inside it. There were cheaper components. The wattage changed. We got a bigger boiler, the configuration inside was slightly different and it just wasn't quite the original Gadget Classic. And that really came to a head with the 2015 model, which was probably the most disliked model among Gadget Classic fans. The switches were different, they weren't these rocker switches, they were more modern push switches, it wasn't the same. It was more plasticky, it was just a different machine. The 2015 machine was quite a way removed from the original. You couldn't even mod the wand on the 2015 without doing quite a bit of DIY, whereas in previous models you could really easily mod the wand. What happened in 2019, Gadger had obviously listened to the customers and released this 2019 or Gadger Classic Pro, which, as I said in my blog post review, is almost back to the original Gadger Classic, but with one major positive change and that is the Pro Steam Wand. So instead of coming with a Panarello that you have to take off and mod with a Rancilio Silvia Steam Wand, it comes with the Pro Steam Wand ready to go, which I think is a great thing. It has the three-way solenoid valve. It's lost the bits of plastic inside that the 2015 model had and they've gone back to the original metal components and higher grade components. There's only really one thing inside the Classic that isn't the same as the original that some of the more hardcore Gadget Classic fans aren't happy about, and that is the overpressure valve. It isn't the same OPV that the original Classic had, which was really quite easy to adjust internally to change the pressure, and you can't change the pressure using the OPV in this machine, I don't believe, or it's harder to do, anyway. But that's actually a deliberate thing from Gadget. They believe that users changing the pressure using the OPV potentially damages the pumps. And they've had some machines back with damaged pumps that they need to replace. And they believe that that has happened often because the user has changed the pressure by the OPV and they don't see any reason for the user to change the pressure. So that's the reason allegedly for that change. Personally, that doesn't bother me. I've never seen any need to change the pressure on my Gadget Classic. But as I say, everything else just about is back to the original Classic. So I'm really impressed with this machine in that regard. 
So now I'll just show you some comparisons visually with the uh, original 2003 Gadget Classic that's sitting up there on the shelf behind me. Side by side, we can see that they look extremely similar. They look almost identical. The new Classic has a stuck on Gadget Classic symbol. Not that makes much difference. You've got the rocker switches as we have on the old one, but we've got lights underneath them rather than the lights being on the buttons. And we've got a separate steam light with the new 2019. We've got three lights, power, water or espresso and steam. The new Classic has these cutouts at the side, which means you can better see the water level of the tank. And the new one has a rounded front to the drip tray rather than it being square. So aesthetically a little bit more pleasing with the new Classic. Of course, the new Classic comes with the Pro Steam one, so you don't have to mod it. The tip, by the way, on the new Classic is a two hole steam tip. Whereas a steam tip on the Ranchilio Silvia that you would usually get on the Steam one was usually a single hole steam tip. So it's a two hole steam tip on the new Steam one. You've got the Steam valve in the same place. The porter filters are very similar. There's a slight difference on the porter filter. I must admit, I think the handle of the new porter filter feels slightly more plasticky. They're both plastic, but it seems like a, a slightly lighter weight plastic, maybe. There's not a great deal of difference in it. And they are very very similar. The 58mm porter filters, by the way, the standard Pro porter filter size. So if you want to change the porter filter, you can. If you want to get a bottomless porter filter, for example, much easier with the Classic because it's one of the espresso machines that has the standard professional sized porter filter. Water tanks the same. The same small internal boiler with an external heating element. Slightly different power. The new one hasn't got quite as high wattage as the original and that's because making kitchen appliances these days there are rules and you know laws about energy saving etc and how high you're allowed to go with wattage that kind of thing so the new one isn't quite as powerful wattage wise as the old one but there's not as much difference in it as there was between the previous versions of the classic and the original classic so as you can see really similar in terms of build aesthetics really not much difference same size same footprint so let's make coffee with the new one and see if the new gadget classic pro is as good at making espresso as the original as you can see we're using the niche zero which is a great coffee grinder the niche zero is about 500 pounds so not everybody is going to pair the niche zero with the gadget classic personally if you can i would recommend starting off putting all your budget into your grinder most people go about it the other way. They put all the thought into the espresso machine, put all the budget into the espresso machine, and then get a grinder as an afterthought, which in my humble opinion is a wrong way to do it. You'd be better off putting all of your budget or as much of your budget as possible into getting a really decent grinder like the Niche Zero, and then getting a cheaper espresso machine over time, upgrading your espresso machine and carrying on using the same grinder. That's a way I would personally recommend to do it. So if you've got your heart set on the Gadget Classic, you can't afford something like the Niche Zero. If you go to coffeeblog.co.uk forward slash grinders, I've reviewed various different grinders on that post, which would work with the Gadget Classic. There's the Ibiratil MC2. There's the Sage Smart Grinder Pro, which I talk a lot about because I've got one of them, or the slightly cheaper Dose Control Pro. But for this, video i'm going to be using the niche zero which i said is a brilliant machine one of the great things about this grinder is as its name would suggest it's nearly zero retention grinder and more importantly nearly zero exchanged retention grinder and that means that usually when you're grinding coffee you get a few grams depending on the grinder of coffee each time coming through into your basket from last time you ground. So what it means is that the first time you grind in the morning with most grinders, or the first time you grind after a while of not grinding coffee, you need to purge coffee through the grinder. Otherwise you'll be using stale 
coffee. More importantly, each time you change the grind size, when you're dialing in, you also need to purge some coffee, you know, two, three, four grams, depending on your grinder. With commercial grinders, it can be quite a lot more, but you have to purge some coffee each time you change the grind setting. But with the Niche Zero, because the exchanged retention, the amount of coffee that ends up in the basket the next time you pull a shot is virtually zero to the degree that you don't need to do any purging. So that's one of the major benefits of the Niche Zero. But anyway, let's grind some coffee and let's pull some shots. And this coffee is from Blue Coffee Box, by the way. I am a subscriber of the Blue Coffee Box subscription, among others. I've got other subscriptions as well. But today I'm using this coffee that's come from Blue Coffee Box from Iron and Fire Coffee Roasters. If you want to find out more about Blue Coffee Box, just go to coffeeblog.co.uk forward slash BCB for my Blue Coffee Box review. I'm using the Brewista Smart Scale 2 here, which is a fairly good scale for the cash. It's about 80 quid, which is actually very inexpensive for brew scales. Only one thing to say about the switches that have changed is that the power switch isn't the standard old fashioned rocker switch as these two are. It is one of them kind of buttons, the spring loaded. So you push it once for on, and then push it again to turn it off, rather than clicking it on, and then clicking it off. I have to say I'm not a massive fan of that, but it'll be because of the new EU, well not that new, but because of the EU regulations about turning itself off, that it needs to be one of them kind of buttons. Really, really nice. That is bang on. Really nice espresso. Really impressed with that for the first shot with the classic. It is worth pointing out that this is with the niche zero, so it's a you know a very very good grinder. Whether you get the same with a cheaper grinder, I'll do another video about that. So espresso wise, that was a really really good shot, and that's the first shot I've tasted with the new Gacha Classic here in my studio. I have tasted espresso made with the new Classic at the Gaja Classic UK premises in Elland near Halifax. Tried the machine there but actually here in my studio this is the first shot I've pulled. That is really really good, really impressed with that shot and no difference espresso wise than I would expect from my old trusty 2003 classic so can't fault that now whether you'd get quite the same results with a cheaper grinder and I can tell you you don't really there is a difference in the taste of espresso pulled with cheaper grinders so the Sage Smart Grinder Pro which I would normally use with my 2003 Gadget Classic the espresso isn't quite as perfect, it isn't quite as good as you'll get with the Zero. And to be fair, this is a £500 grinder and the Smart Grinder Pro is a £200 grinder that you can get from 140 150 160 if you're lucky. So it's unfair to expect to get the same results from a much cheaper grinder. So I'm going to pull another shot now and I'm going to steam milk using the new Pro Steam Wand with the two hole steam tip. Let's see how that goes and I'm going to make a flat white and I'm going to be bouncing off the walls very soon, which is about standard. Whoa! 
<laughs> well, that was more powerful than I was expecting. I'm using a really small milk jug, so I'm going to use a different jug. <laughs> hmm, I was using a small 300ml milk jug that I would use with the old classic, the Espro. It's got a little indentation in the middle, it helps it with a single hole seam tip on the original classic. I'll put a link below, by the way, to this jug. Uh, it just helps it help you to roll the milk with single hole seam tips. But it's only 300ml, I'm going to go with a slightly bigger jug because when they use this up at Ellen in the Gazi UK offices or showroom, I used a much bigger jug. I do remember thinking it was, the steam seemed really quite powerful compared to the old classic. And I think it's just because of the, the steam tip more than anything. But I've forgotten about that, so I'm using a bit of a bigger jug now, so I've got more space. Try that again. So it's nice and glossy, looks like gloss paint or melted ice cream, as some people describe it. That's a bit rubbish, but I'm kind of doing it around the camera, <laughs> so it's a bit difficult. I'll do another one. bad. I'm getting the hang of the steam now with the New Gesher Classic and the angle that I can get the jug at in order to get the milk rolling properly so that's a bit more like it. Not my best but not bad. Let me try it. Ah oh, yeah very very nice flat white. So there you go, I've pulled a couple of shots, I've steamed a few jugs of milk, I've made a few flat whites, I'm about to start bouncing off the walls, and I'm really impressed with the new Gaja Classic, I have to say. I'm impressed with the espresso quality, it's what I would expect from the original Gaja Classic. Really, really decent espresso with the Niche Zero. If you invest in a grinder like the Niche Zero, it's going to increase your ability with any espresso machine to a certain degree you know if you buy a really really cheap 100 150 pound domestic espresso machine you're going to be limited as to how better your espresso is going to be by investing in something like the niche zero but with more capable espresso machines like the gadget classic something like the niche zero is going to ramp up the potential shot quality compared to using a cheaper grinder. 
I'd expect decent results as well with the Gadget Classic Pro with slightly cheaper grinders such as the Sage Mark Grinder Pro. Not quite as good, I would suspect, as with the Niche Zero, but still pretty good espresso. And I will do another video comparing the quality of the espresso with the Gadget Classic with various different grinders. I'll do some blind tasting as I've done previously with the Sage Bambino Plus. I'll do a similar thing, blind tasting, but with different grinders so we can just get an idea of what difference the grinder makes to the espresso. But as I said, with something like the Sage Smart Grinder Pro, Sage Dose Control Pro, the Iverital MC2, you know, 150, 200 pound, that kind of range, I would expect still good espresso, but you know, I'm using a 500 pound, really good quality coffee grinder here, the, the Niche Zero. So I'm kind of a little bit spoilt, but really good espresso and really, really good steam power, really good milk texturing. I wasn't quite expecting, I wasn't quite expecting the steam power that I've got from this machine. Steam power was always okay with the original classic, but what I used to find is that I had to use the steam straight away rather than waiting for the light to come on. And as long as I did that, I got okay power from the original classic. With this, as you saw, I was getting power that was blowing the milk out of the jug on the smaller jug that I started out with. It really delivers an amazing amount of steam for such a tiny little 80 mil steam boiler. But again, it has got a small amount of water to heat up and a big element, a big powered element. It's got more power than the Rancilio Silvia and that's got a bigger boiler, so a bigger body of water to heat up. So it makes sense that it's got power, but why it's got so much power than the original classic that could just be that my original classic has been in use for 17 years and that when it first came out of the box you know with a brand new boiler a brand new heating element maybe it had just as much power as this i'm not sure it could be something to do with the new steam one than the two hole steam tip but i'm steaming milk i have been steaming milk today with the same kind of speed same kind of time as with a much more expensive heat exchanger or dual boiler machine like the Profitech Pro 600 which I reviewed fairly recently. How the Gadget Classic does that I'm not entirely sure but I am really impressed with the steam power. There's nothing really negative to say about the Gadget Classic. The only thing I could say if I'm being picky is that it is more expensive than the earlier models but you've got to remember that the earlier models sort of up to 2015, weren't quite the original classic. They were, in my opinion, a cheaper machine inside the body of the original classic. And this is more or less the original classic. So you kind of get what you pay for and it probably costs more. Well, it, it will definitely cost more to build than the earlier models, you know, 2009 to 2015 models did. And I don't think the price is over the top for what it is. I think 399 for this machine is actually a really good price. If you're not familiar with the cost of home espresso machines, you might think that 400 pound is a heck of a lot of money to pay for an espresso machine. But people who are more familiar with the price of home barista machines will know that they can be 1,000 pound, 1,500 pound, 2,000 pound, and higher and higher. So £400, 399 for a machine like this that are really built to last and are easy to maintain, fairly inexpensive to maintain over the years and that deliver espresso of the quality this will with a decent grinder and which are capable of delivering such good quality textured milk. It's actually a really good price. But being more expensive, it does put it into an area that there's more competition. The Ranchilio Silvia is only £100 more now than this. I think Bella Barista sell the new Ranchilio Silvia for 4 dollars so it's like £100 more. And at around about the same price, you've got the Sage Bambino Plus that I've done quite a lot of videos on recently. So 
there is competition around that price. But having said that, that isn't stopping this machine from selling like hotcakes. The reason that I've not been able to do this review yet, and I'm only just doing it now, is that it's hard to get hold of the Gaja Classic. They come over from Italy, and pretty much as soon as they land, they sell out, they're really sought after. People have really taken well to the new Gaja Classic Pro. Obviously, the coronavirus situation has impacted on that because there's more demand for decent home espresso machines, given that cafes have been shut and there's been less supply because Italy was on lockdown for quite a while and these won't have been made during that time. But even before that, the new Gaja Classic Pro is selling really well. They do go out of stock very quickly after coming in. Just one thing to note about the price, I'll put a link in the description below to Gaja Direct, who are the official distributor for Gaja. But just bear in mind that yes, you can get them slightly cheaper. You might get them 30, 40, and 50 quid cheaper from some sellers on Amazon and other websites. But just bear in mind that there are sellers on Amazon and by their own websites selling the Gaja Classic Pro, which appears to be coming from the UK, it appears to be UK stock, but it's cheaper, but it isn't UK stock. They're actually been grey imported from Italy, which is fine, but it means you don't have the UK warranty because you bought it from an Italian supplier, unbeknown to you, because as I say, it does look like you're buying UK stock, but if you're getting it for 30, 40, 50 quid cheaper, just double check because more than likely you're buying it directly from Italy. And if you do have an issue with it, if you do need to return it under warranty, you'll be returning it to Italy. It'll cost you to return it. And that's a pain that you know, nobody wants. So just bear that in mind if you are looking at saving a bit of money on the Gaggio Classic. So I think that's about it. As I said, I will come back with other videos about the Gadget Classic. I'll do comparisons. I'll do a comparison with the Sage Brambino Plus for anyone who's trying to decide between them two machines because they are about the same price point. I'll do blind tasting with espresso pulled by the Gadget Classic using various different grinders. And I'll do quite a few other videos. If there's any specific things you'd like me to cover, if there's any videos you'd like to see, just leave me a comment below. And I always try and respond to comments and quite often I will create videos in reply to comments as you'll have seen if you watched previous videos so that's it for now thank you for watching if you enjoyed this video please click the like button that would be very kind of you and if you're not subscribed just click this round photo here ish and subscribe to my channel and if you allow notifications you'll be notified when i upload the next video and as i said i'm going to do a few more videos quite a few more videos on the gadget classic and i've got lots of other videos coming up that you might be interested in. So click subscribe. Tatty bye.